very specific models. Um, this is a set of new DEM models. Um, they, they look very similar to the envelopment models that we've discussed um, in the very first. So um, these models um, are actually used to treat um, some inputs or outputs that are not controllable by the the management of the DMU. For example, um, the weather, you cannot control the weather. Um, the, the average um, traffic is served that we um, discussed in the, the highway um, example. And for example, the population, that you, cannot, you, don't have, you, do, you do not have control over that. Um, if, let's say if population is an input, you cannot uh, reduce um, that input as if you would do the same for the uh, for the other inputs, um, I mean you can have many examples in terms of uh, the measures whether those measures are controllable or not controllable. For example, if you build a house, um, the square footage. Once you build a house, you c you cannot change the square footage. The square footage is a, a non-controllable um, fact. In the original D uh, model. Uh, for example, in the um, envelopment model, all the inputs and outputs are assumed to be controllable. Uh, for example, in an input-oriented model, you can change, um, you can reduce all the inputs at the same rate at the same time, and in an output-oriented model, you can increase all the outputs uh, in the same rate at the same time. But we cannot do that for those measures that are not controllable. Um, you, you, we cannot change them by the DMU. Uh, whether a measure is controllable or not, that's one situation. Another situation that, let's say, given that you have five measures, but you are only interested in a sub subset of the five measures, uh, you are only interested in the performance of a set of DMU based upon a subset. Um, of the measures, so you're got only going to um, look at the, the performance or the efficiency um, in terms of a subset of inputs and outputs. So we need a set of new models uh, that reflect the above two situations. Okay? Um, only a subset of inputs are being reduced in the same proportion. Why? All the other inputs and out outputs are kept at the uh, current level, and only uh, a subset of outputs are increased in the same proportion. Um, that's an an output-oriented model, uh, while keeping the other other outputs and the all the inputs at the current levels. Um, now, note that. In all the DM models so far we've discussed, uh, we are always try to reduce the inputs and increase the outputs. Uh, we haven't discussed, uh, we have not discussed the situation that we want to um, increase um, the inputs uh, or, or decrease the outputs in the DEA model. Um, because in, in the EA usually uh, we believe that in order to improve the performance or improve the efficiency, we want to reduce the inputs, which usually are the, the resources, or increase the, the outputs. So this is how the new model works. Uh, let's say um, we have two inputs, um, x1 and x2, and we also assume that the, the outputs are the same. So in that case, we are able to look at um, this problem just in a two-dimensional spa uh, uh, space. Um, you have a frontier, uh, which is the uh, the solid line here, and you have say A, uh, B, C, D, four DMUs. Now, if you look at this uh, DMU D, which is inefficient, um, the the original uh, DEM model uh, would evaluate um, this D uh, with respect to a a point on the frontier right there. Okay, so. In a sense, both inputs are being reduced. Both inputs are being reduced. Now, if uh, let's say um, the second input x2 is not controllable, let's say that the, uh, the second input is a weather. So, uh, in this case, uh, for d, you are only going to reduce the uh, first input x1 to b to heat, uh, 
um, to this point on the frontier going to be. Uh, now if we assume that x1 uh, um, is not controllable, so in that case you're only going to reduce the second uh, input, so you're going to reduce the d f uh, from the current location all the way to uh, point A on the frontier. So as you can see, um, the the models, uh, the new models that uh, that reflect the two situations that we discussed, the one that is for um, non-controllable factors and the other one is I'm um, only just in a subset of inputs or subset of outputs, um, actually pick a different um, benchmark point on the frontier. Okay, um, Only the inputs in this case, which are controllable, uh, are being reduced, while the others are fixed at their current levels. So let's take a look at uh, this model. This is also an input-oriented CRS model. Uh, what's different is, is in here. Um, I basically divide the input into two subdets. Okay, and one is called I, and uh, th this says uh, the input belongs to the set I, and this says the input is not belong to the I. And the theta, the efficiency in this case, uh, only appears in front of um, those inputs that in a set I, but not um, in in here. Okay, in this uh, the second uh, equation here. Now note, although you only see two equations, but uh, for uh, there are also a number of uh, individual equations um, in each um, of this um, equality constraint here. Um, so if you look at this model, um, you know that okay only these inputs are being reduced in a sense these inputs are controllable and the, the, um, these inputs are not controllable or um, in another situation uh, we are only interested in um, the inputs in the in this particular set okay so this is still it's input oriented um, and it's CRS because um, we don't have the the constraints on the sum of all the lambdas, so this is the uh, the constant return to scale model. Um, again, this model is solved in two stages, as as um, the regular uh, input oriented CIS model. First, you solve this model for the efficiency for the theta, but again, um, you don't include the theta uh, in the, on those uh, inputs that are not controllable. And that's first stage, and then second stage is you fix the um, the efficiency, and then you calculate um, the slacks. So the, I mean, this model is very similar to the slack model that we we talked about in the invariant models. Uh, the only difference is, is the where you put the, the theta, and and based upon the the optimal um, solutions from the two stages, um, you can get uh, a projection. Okay, uh, the uh, projection onto the frontier. Okay, so the the projection basically says, uh, you know. What if uh, you want a particular inefficient DMU to be efficient? What would be the um, the new levels of the inputs in the, and the outputs? So that's the projection. And this is an output-oriented CIS model. Um, it's very similar to the regular output-oriented output CIS model, except that you only put the the output efficiency in front of the outputs that are that are controllable that are controllable. And again, the model is solved in two stages. First stage, the um, the efficiency, and the second stage, the slacks. Now, as as in the regular output-oriented CIS model, the the efficiency uh, in this case is always greater than or equal to one. 